All right, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors. Sorry, are you ready to record? Okay, good. Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors regular meeting Tuesday, February 1, 2022, 6 30 p.m. Rochester campus. Boom, via Google Meet agenda. We have called to order. Do we have adjustments to the agenda? Uh, yeah, we. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, I have well, another one. You have one uh, too? Yeah, communication from uh, the Stockbridge uh, Select Board. I um, like that. Should that go wherever you want it? Discussion? Or just under. Board comments? Probably. Yeah, let's put it under discussion. 9 6. Got it. 9 6, uh, communication. Stockbridge selects. Uh, and it's Thursday. Do we know what time? Time back then, right? We'll talk about it then. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. To slap me silly. That's Hit okay. me going. I'm, I'm, okay, assign time and no, time. No, I had another adjustment to the oh, sorry, agenda. Sorry, um, sorry. We haven't yet. We, at our last meeting, we had said that we were going to discuss um, reserve funds. Reserve funds. Thank to, you. To bring us all up to speed about the information, what they are, what yep, we have. Yep, yep, yep. That should be discussion as well, 9 7. That is also part of my business manager's report. Uh, do you want to do it then? Let's, let's do yeah, it then. Yeah, if, if it's already part of the let's report, do, that's fine. Yep. Let's do, I just uh, noticed it was not on the agenda and we had discussed it last. Funds, so let's make sure we get that. So we'll add a little bit more. 40 minutes for the whole group. Okay. That, well, yeah. Let's be real strict about that tonight. Do you want? You want me to be a timekeeper? Do you mind? Oh, well, that's, you the, that's the next thing we're doing. I just yeah. need the bottom half. Oh, you just need the bottom half. <laughs> that's my voicemail. <laughs> Got you. Um, Let's just write it down over here. There you go. There, there, you, go. Go. there you go. There we go. All right. Thanks. Good. So um, uh, we're adding that into business manager. Is everyone okay with these changes to the agenda? Yes. Yes. Thumbs up uh, works for me from the visuals. Thank you. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, that being said, let us go to the consent agenda. 4.1 approved minutes of Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Regular. Um, the only thing I saw was uh, Donna Gallant's name. I believe there's a T at the end of there. it. Um, it'd be nice to spell that correctly. That was... Uh, in the attendees and 8.1. Yeah, 8. and in 8.1 where she presented. It was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Just to be Donna Gallant, who's... That was the only thing I noticed. Anybody else? Uh, are we all okay with that correction? I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of uh, Tuesday, January 4th. So moved. Big motion. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Second. Second. Uh, moved by Bill. Seconded by Justine. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Or a aye. thumbs up. Thumbs up works good too. Good. Moving on. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? We have an unknown. And we had Nancy. Nancy is there. was there, but I think she's gone. She's the unknown. Oh, she's still there. She's the unknown. Oh, she's the unknown? unknown? Yeah, okay. Nancy. Good. Uh, if, Nancy, if you have a public comment for us. If not. I do not. Great. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, board comment. Um, I just wanted to always like to do these things. Um, I heard from the contractors when I was over there, Alliance, that uh, Jesse, and I'm forgetting her last name. Potter. Jesse Potter was extremely useful to them and uh, really was very helpful in, in their whole process of what they had to do. So I just always like to acknowledge um, people doing their job well. Um, so thank you, Jesse. Um, any other board comment? Bill. Yeah, I want to commend you as our leader and chairman and your letter to the editor in the, um, the Herald last Thursday. I thought it was unbelievably articulate, well said, and I think overwhelmingly you reflected the views of this board 
succinctly and well, and I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good. Other board comment? There being none, let's move on to this celebration of learning. It almost seems like we should do this, except for the teacher has to hang out. We should do this between like 9 and 10. <laughs> Back when we need some pickup. I yeah. know, but it, it's a good no, way to start. It's a good way to start. Way to, start to, to, this is what we're, reason why we're here. It's exactly, doing the jobs exactly. Because then, of then it the makes us make all the right learning. decisions. Exactly. Great. Uh, we are ready for a celebration of learning. Here we go. So, Miss Lauren and Mr. Burley couldn't be here tonight because yep. this is bedtime. Yeah. Um, at their households, but they put together this great presentation on the happenings and the amazing learning that's going on in our Rochester preschool with our three and four year olds. Okay. And just so folks are aware, she has um, she's full, she has 15 students in there, which great. is awesome. That's amazing. Um, so it's great. And so here's kind of just some action shots and feel free to read. We start each year with the year with establishing rules and routines and investigating classroom materials. My oh. favorite part of preschool. Look at those blocks, the yeah. ones with the Holes the space in the middle, that and then amazing. the items on the left are what's known as jumbo cuisinier rods, and our older students use those as well to build their number sense. Uh -huh. But we we're starting in both preschools with those. Even younger. so, they're familiar with them. Absolutely, mm -hmm. what a great thing! What a great thing! And seeing equivalencies. Exactly. How many colors make this color? Right. Great. We explore the school campus and build friendships throughout the year. I know. I love using the river. That's great. We take our learning outside as much as possible. Yay. Numbers and practicing letters oh, outside. I forgot to announce. Sorry. Uh, Later. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Keep going. Good. Dramatic play it allows the children to explore oh, oh. different roles. Why aren't we doing this in the whole elementary school? <laughs> the theater man wonders. Sorry. It's just in a different way, the older I, they get, even. <laughs> I know. No, it's just, you know. I know. This is great. This is, is great. Um, great. We work with a variety of tools in preschool to support learning. And what are they doing? Cutting with scissors on the left. Oh, are those x-rays? Yes. That's amazing. What a great idea. What a great idea. Gosh. These guys are good. These people are good. They are very good. Yeah, we work on gross motor skills daily. Oh, I like that. It's like a little yeah. obstacle course. Yeah, I know, I like that. And they are also, bridges. both preschools are participating in the implementation of our Bridges Math program, so we're starting all the way down at three and four mm -hmm. with That's this work. Amazing. That's great. And is that Play-Doh numbers on the that right? That is Play-Doh numbers on the right, pattern blocks, and then Unifix cubes. And oh, I love that. So father brought some of home. I was sitting there with for hours. Yes. They're amazing. Um, so they're part of their workplace station. So it's a lot of exploring to build their number sense and recognizing it. I want to go back to pre-K. Good. Next. Thank you. So here's a little video about working on writing our numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. And is this the four-year-old group or, or um, the So they're intermixed. The four-year-olds are here five days a week Ooh, a from 8.15 to 2.45. And the three-year-olds are in two groups. Um, okay, so this could be a four-year-old four This particular or a four -year -old. student is a four-year-old. That's nice writing. <laughs> nice writing. Oh, we'll keep oh. going. I learned that the hard way. Sorry, Parker. Yeah. Nature in our classroom. We recently grew microgreens and mushrooms. Oh. The students loved eating the microgreens. <laughs> <laughs> Both preschools have received some pretty significant grant funds through some of this COVID relief money that's mm -hmm. separate from um, like the ESSER funds. Yep. And so um, they use it in a variety of ways. And one way Lauren's group has chosen to use it is Miss Braun introduced mushrooms during outdoor ed and they wanted to grow their own mushrooms. So they've started their own microgreen mushroom farm, potentially. We'll see where it goes. Hey, Justine, maybe they could come. I don't know, is Zach still doing that? They come visit his farm? Hey. 
Hey, Patrick. Hi. Right At Celebration of Learning, and this is the, um, uh, they're showing preschool. What preschool is doing. Oh, and great. We've gone through a bunch of different things, playing outside, playing with letters. Um, and this is mushrooms and microgreens. They're growing through grant, um, grant money. That was funded. Yeah. Great. We build with many types of blocks. Wow, look at that castle. <laughs> That's amazing. I love this stuff. Um, I love the creative mask, too, the green one with the teeth. <laughs> there's we use there's some very creative ones. We use handwriting tears. This is a really good format, by the way, for getting us engaged, too. We use handwriting without tears for handwriting instruction. Yeah. Is this a program, Handwriting Without Tears? So Handwriting Without Tears is a program that our uh -huh. primary grades teachers have been trained in uh, starting in Rochester, and it will expand to Stockbridge. But yes, it's all about where you start, you know, top to bottom versus top of page, clear page, and um, lots of arrows and things like that, and pencil print. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see it yeah. in the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you follow the line. Yeah, it starts big. And, yeah. Okay. Great. Next. Volcano, snow volcano, stem with snow. Three, two, one. <laughs> 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 they must have loved oh, yeah. that. Yes. Good. Next. What a great way to bring outside uh, and, uh -huh. and, Science. and they also go outside, both groups, with Miss Braun, um, once a week. Lots of exploring. So, that left photograph is absolutely beautiful. It should be, what, that's great. a web page yeah. photo. That's great. Um, that's great. Yeah, we love outdoor education with Mrs. Braun. Is it Ms. Nice. I think it is. Yoga plot class. I guess they so, all. So everybody does mindfulness yoga one time a month, uh -huh. preschool through sixth grade in both buildings. And, um, been very popular, no matter the mm -hmm. sixth grade more popular now that they're trying to learn how to balance and their brain yeah. and rest. Mm -hmm. But um, my daughter's in kindergarten, she comes home and shows me. Yay. <laughs> she uh -huh. Yeah, she they do. It. They yeah, do well, these they do. Yeah. stations. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's been great. She's um Dion Myrick is her name and she is great with all ages. That's excellent. And it's once a month? Once a month, yep. Yeah. Uh, that's really that's great. Cool. It's, it's nice to have a variety of exposures and not, yeah, and and not like one that's 30, all the time. 30 minutes and it offsets well with nice. some others. Thanks for virtually vi visiting our <laughs> preschool program. <laughs> oh. It was lovely. It was oh. Please send our congratulations. Absolutely. She was excited to share. Um, <laughs> great. Yep. Thank you. That is yeah. wonderful. Thank you. That's some really wonderful things that are happening in there. Oh, it just looks off. fun and colorful. Oh, it's, a, and it's exciting. They found a way to get our four-year-olds here five days a week yep. in Rochester, so that's great. Yep. Are they here for a full day, or is it yeah, a pretty close? Day? Eight fifteen to two forty-five. Yeah, they leave a little earlier, yeah, so, just so that the same traffic them. pattern. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> traffic pattern for the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's I remember that. <laughs> wonderful. Excellent. Let's move on to reports to the board. 8.1 superintendent. Well, that's what's up back to follow. Yeah, <laughs> but it was, it was great. And uh, <clears throat> thank you, Lindy, for piloting this. And, and this is, these uh, celebrations of learning are going to be happening across the SU now. So um, thanks for being the, the pilot district. Um, so you have my report in hand. Uh, I'm referenced in the report, um, as you know, that we, and it's on the agenda to give an update on the high school building. Um, and so hopefully you had time to read the uh, memo that Ethan and I put out in regards to the high school building um, when we had a heating issue um, a few weeks ago now. Um, so, and we'll talk about that more thoroughly um, under 9.3. Um, but I know there's a great data presentation for us to get to as well. Um, so I'll entertain any questions folks have. Thanks for giving me last month off. I did end up going home that night and testing positive for COVID. So I've had COVID and got through it. Um, so um, 
I'm, I'm on the mend and moving forward. And, you know, I, I referenced in our report in regards to we did have our highest rates of positivity across the SU the last few weeks. But I will tell you that our numbers are now projecting in a much more positive uh, trend. Um, and so I think that we are, we're hopefully through Omicron in regards to our SU. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to us once again, returning to a little more normalcy than what we had in December and January. It was, it's been pretty intense in the COVID world in those two months. And so as uh, you know, we're coming up to February break and then hopefully spring and, and our data will start to get better again in regards to COVID. And I'll take any questions folks have. I just wanted to say, like, I think our schools have done such an amazing job. I've been watching the numbers the whole time and I'm watching them around the state and I have friends all around the state who have kids in school. And I think our our situation is just amazing how, how well we've handled it and how our numbers are, have remained pretty low compared to other districts. I think it's cool. Good. Other questions for the superintendent? Robert, you good? Oh, you might have lost. Yes, I'm fine. Great, thank you. Let's move and on. Ethan, thank you again for the really kind words in the Herald. I oh, you're welcome. Note, but I also wanted to, to capture that here. I, uh, I uh, just, I really believe the last thing I said that, you know, it's always really good to thank the people who take such good care of our kids as often as possible. So thank you all. Great. Uh, principal, including February academic data report. All right. Well, just in terms of the principal's report, you have it in front of me, uh, or in front of you. A couple additions or just kind of updates that I would share since then. What's kind of um, gone on is, well, or highlights, winter wellness is up and running again. And I My think son it's loves great. it. He's it's crazy been, about it going pretty great. smoothly which is great um comes with a little hiccups but anytime you move that many kids one place it <laughs> happens um but everybody seems to be enjoying it Absolutely. so that's been great and um, does is winter wellness happen as a joint um it campuses does not or is there no i was no. gonna say it's because trying to coordinate one everything. of the pieces of feedback and why we chose to go somewhere different than snowball and Riker was that to go as such a large group, it really became chaperones were teaching kids who truly needed lessons. Yeah. Like if yeah. they had the ability to get up on skis their own, they were off and doing that. And so we tried to coordinate to a place that could support our need. And that meant they were trying to keep grouping numbers low as well mm -hmm. because of COVID to make sure that they could still do the right amount of instruction. So this year it is separate, but we have talked with our contact about making it joint again in the future. Right, and probably COVID does have a big impact on it because of the numbers and the space. Right, and staffing. Just like everyone else, they're yeah. dealing with their own staffing mm -hmm. rotations. So, um, Hence but, how we started it two weeks later. Right, if we did wait to start because they were having their own outbreak situation. Um, so that's back up and running again, and I can't think of anything else other than we're almost at our 100th day of school, uh -huh. which is exciting. We do school-wide celebration around that. Um, I have a few more M&Ms to count out for the kids. <laughs> but as, um, we, each class has come up with some sort of goal or is in the progress of, process of coming up with a goal. So, for example, 456 is trying to come up with 100 combined mimic, minutes that include reading, working on math problems, mindfulness, and exercise. Well, so right. that's one example. Kindergarten definitely has their own deal because this is truly a kindergarten experience. Um, so we're excited about that. Weather permitting, it's next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those are kind of the big highlights um, as we move forward. But then we have our data presentation too. Okay. Do we have questions on the report first from anybody? Um, Bill? Yeah, I was just wondering uh, how the teacher's holding up. This is, and, and you, um, just phenomenal. And I read your report, I just smile from year to year. Every single month is uh, the highlight. Um, um, and what your team is doing together uh, yeah. with the kids. Um, and so, how things going? Things are going well. We are definitely 
hopefully towards the end of some folks being out with either symptoms or some positivity, which will hopefully, um, you know, improve and they're feeling well and ready to come back. But we're here and in person. I think we all kind of hit our fatigue point with it. It's hard not to at this point. Um, but we're working on, and this is a lot of Jamie's support as well, that we're transitioning to this endemic and that it's not a need to like drop your whole world mm -hmm. because something's mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. uh, positivity wise and there's plenty of time to make sure notification happens and things like that and really kind of retraining folks um, that we're available but there's healthy boundaries which includes you know not being on your email at nine o'clock at night or on the weekend and just really trying to recharge i'm trying to do that as much as encourage others Excellent. to do that great so, great thank you for know. sharing that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, -uh. uh further questions about the report no 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 patrick no. justine robert you good can't quite see you guys i'm good good thank you I'll assume she is. Great, WRVSU Roadmap to Success. So I don't know if you guys saw, Onda Adams, our Chief Academic Officer, um, mm -hmm. is here tonight to help with this presentation She's the as one well. In the blue. Yes, that's yeah, her. Thank you, Onda. Next to Tara. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll turn it over to her and Jamie to start, and then we'll keep moving forward. So good evening. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but this is the type of a uh, presentation that certainly fills my bucket along with uh, when you can look at what we're doing in pre-k to set up those foundational skills uh, to set our kids up for success um, in grades k through uh, six i think it's pretty special so i think pre-k celebration wendy was the perfect pick um, to lead into this presentation and so just the intentionality <laughs> that occurred in it um, and so what I would say also, I, I missed the opportunity and wanted to just remind the board, I don't know if you clicked on the link in my report, and I know Lindy sent it out later this e uh, evening, please visit the new Rochester Stockbridge Unified District website. I think it's really impressive. Lindy and the staff work very hard with Kate McLean to get that updated. And um, I, it's a website that I certainly am proud of, uh, and hopefully that you share that sentiment too. Um, so in the fall, the uh, WRVSU board uh, adopted um, academic indicators and around uh, kind of our three overarching goals that you hear us talk about and report out on, on a monthly basis. The first one being forming and sustaining a comprehensive multi-tiered system of supports. And you know, the best way I think for us to, to summarize that quickly is, is the idea that we have a system that's um, flexible, that it ensures that students aren't labeled uh, and, and or put into boxes, and um, make certain that students receive responsive intervention. Not that we have to wait to get students intervention, but that we can respond swiftly and quickly to intervene academically or socially, emotionally to best meet our students' needs. Uh, and so we have a goal there under that, which is by 2025, 80% of our students will engage in universal instruction for the majority of the school year, decreasing the number of students in long-term target intensive intervention, meaning 80% 80, 80 of our students are met through classroom universal instruction and not needing intervention. Our second goal is to implement a pre-K through 12 proficiency-based learning system. You heard us talk a lot about our, our continued focus around curriculum development, uh, our focus on personalized learning and pathways, and all of that's encompassed under uh, goal two. And so what we have here is, by 2025, all of our grades uh, assessed on the state summative assessments, and that's Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. And so some of the data you're gonna receive tonight um, is in alignment around predictors to the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. But a reminder that we only do SBAC, Smarter Balance, in the spring. That's, that's a one-time, annual summative assessment that's aligned to the Common Core State Standards. And then finally, number three is to improve student learning and increase equitable educational opportunities. And what we said there is by 2025, all students in the final grade in their school will complete a self-selected capstone project 
that showcases their knowledge, skills, and interests using their own voice. So what we're working toward is that all students uh, will have an authentic assessment um, that's rigorous and relevant to their learning, and that will be on display for community uh, engagement and feedback. So that's something that certainly I'm really excited about as we move to the future. Uh, the other thing was by 2025 under goal two, that all students in grades K through two will acquire foundational skills in literacy and math that set them up for success in the later grades. We know that early intervention and strong universal instruction at the primary grades really is um, the most critical indicator for our students' trajectory and success as they move through their educational career. So tonight, the data reports that you're going to receive on a universal assessment data, hopefully you'll see how they align to these overarching goals. Next slide. And I'm going to turn it over to Anda to give some background in regards to our assessment framework. Great, thank you, Jamie. So um, the you just saw the roadmap to success and the both the goals and the indicators that we have that are aligned to that. This mm -hmm. um, work today that we're going to talk about is mostly um, sitting in that sort of second bucket uh, and thinking about the academic uh, achievement indicators. It's you know everything is interconnected, um, and certainly we saw in the in the preschool presentation sort of all different ways in which uh, students are um, you know showcasing their own learning. Uh, ways in which they're working together, getting individualized attention. And so there is, in some ways, all the goals and indicators are connected. But um, for today's presentation, we were focusing really on those academic indicators uh, that um, we have sort of identified within that second bucket. And I just wanted to um, sort of give us a little bit of a bigger picture and just remind um, of why we do a lot of assessments. Uh, and assessment um, sometimes gets focused on just that end of the year summative assessment, but really the assessment is what's happening in our classroom, you know, every day when we watch that preschool video um, where the, the teacher was doing the numbers and the student was writing it, that was assessment. That's a formative assessment where right, right in the moment the teacher is getting, you know, how, how is the student um, forming each of the numbers? Uh, did they even have to look up at her model or were they just going, you know, are they going from automaticity? We saw the sort of the number eight where, you know, the kids certainly had an idea of what it was going to look like and then did it again. So all of that is assessment data that our teachers are using. And um, I think you, we will argue that that is actually the most valuable type of data. And we got to see a window of it tonight. Um, but it's not really the kind of data that we're able to, um, you know, look at across an entire SU, across an entire district in ways that we look at some of the other data. So we have to have a kind of a balanced assessment system so that we are both um, looking at individual students, figuring out where their needs are, where, they, where, where they've got their knowledge and skills and where they're growing, and then where we are as a system and where we might have curricular gaps or we need um, more help with certain types of instruction. So that's where sort of a balanced assessment system looks at all the different kinds of ways that we can get information um, and make decisions based on that, depending on where sort of where we are in the system. So I'd like to sort of just set the why we, why we do the assessing to sort of better understand where everyone is. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, and this is just a, a, like a quick snapshot of what that balance of system is. Um, when we um, looked at uh, academic achievement data back in the fall, I think it was at, your, at the October meeting, we were looking at universal screening data. It's kind of very similar to what we'll look, see tonight, um, but it is again just getting that real baseline for the beginning of the year, and we do all kids so we can see you know where are the kids that we might need um, to put some extra supports around where are kids that we need to stretch. Um, and then we do sort of ongoing progress monitoring, that, that formative assessment that happens sort of every day uh, throughout the year. And then at the end, or at, at sort of check marks through the year, um, winter and spring, we do these benchmarks. And then there's sort of the summative, which is a, in, um, over the entire year, what, you know, what have students learned, what, where we as a system move. So that all of that sort of sits together. Um, so no one piece alone sort of decides sort of, you know, what's working well and what's not, but we look at all those pieces together. Next slide, please. Uh, and then again, there's always a lot of lingo uh, in, um, in education. And so just a quick uh, um, view here of some of the common terms that we use. Uh, I think ELA, you know, is, is our short term for literacy, reading, and writing. Um, VAS is our, one of our assessments for literacy. It's the benchmark assessment system. Uh, PNOA is one of our math assessments. We use it primarily with our kindergarten, but also early elementary. Uh, SBAC, as Jamie talked about, is the summative at the end of the year, just done once uh, in grades three through 10 for literacy and math, and then five, eight, and 11 for science. 
um, STAR 360 and TMP or Track My Progress are both um, sort of computer adaptive tests that we use as both the universal screener and these benchmarks during the year just to see how students are measuring sort of against what our expectations are at the state level for what they should know by sort of January of third grade, January of sixth grade, and then again in, uh, at the end of the year. So mm -hmm. you'll see some of those terms come up in the rest of the um, presentation as well. The Rochester and Stockbridge schools are using STAR 360 um, right now, and so that is the that is the assessment for which we have the data for tonight. And I think um, if you'll go to the next slide, remembering uh, and next slide. So this is just a little bit of a, um, a deeper dive on those academic indicators for grades three through ten, and you know here in ours are three through you know three through six um, on the annual state that we're using the annual state summative assessment um, for that indicator. We don't actually have that data tonight, but we have things that we the benchmark monitoring that we do in the fall and the winter we believe is supposed to be predictive of performance on that summative, and so that is why we sort of we look at it and we'll look at performance and. Um, they'll give us an idea of how we think our students are going to perform um, at the end of the year on the summative. And then the next slide, for grades K-2, we set a goal or an indicator around acquiring foundational skills in literacy and math. And this year we are piloting some different assessment tools for measuring student progress. Um, those students are not assessed on the state, um, state test. Uh, we certainly wouldn't wait till third grade to figure out, you know, where students, um, what they know and what they, um, where their areas of growth are. Uh, but we are trying out some different assessment tools this year. We plan to adopt um, and administer them next year as the, as the benchmark tools, and then we'll have a baseline at the end of next spring, um, and then be able to finalize that goal. So that goal is the one that doesn't have um, uh, the numbers associated with it yes, yet, but we are looking at the, um, some different tools to use to get a better understanding of where our students are uh, with their literacy and math skills in those grades. And the next slide. Uh, next, we have just the, the, um, the graph, and I'll hand it over to Lindy to uh, talk about the, the progress here in um, Rochester and Stockbridge. This is in our packets. Yep, this there. is the beginning of what's in your packet, as well as the summary. Um, so before we go too far, I wanted to start with some celebrations, because there's actually quite a few celebrations, some that you're going to see here and some that um, are more individualized. but. Starting with our reading data, so this is from the STAR 360, um, and some of the bigger celebrations is if you look at that grade 4 and the grade 5 group, and you look at their fall meeting proficiency and where they are um, now in the winter, they had some of the largest growth rates and really improvement, and that means that many more students per this screener are now at that proficiency level or meeting the standard. Mm -hmm. which is great to see. So um, this is 80%, over 80%. Yep, yeah. yep. they were assessed um, second week of January to last week. Oh, so okay, okay. We'll try about 100 days. And this is combined? This is combined data, so yeah. it's not no. identifiable. Good. <laughs> second week of January or September, you're saying? Uh, we did the second week of September to the second week of January. Okay. Like, so gotcha. it's about the same time frame yeah, yeah. from each. Um, and so... That other thing that I will um, say, so those are huge celebrations mm -hmm. and really impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, my next. That's awesome. That is uh, fantastic, um, and I don't think celebration is too strong of a term. <laughs> um, did you change technique? Did you change uh, focus? Did you uh, 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 instructional? Uh, material, what, yeah, can you what, account what for the what's, uh, or the, the kids are just, uh, thanks to their parents, are, are <laughs> yeah. rocking so, and rolling. Um, so we kind of had two approaches. Um, some of the change in fourth and fifth grade is that in, specifically to Stockbridge, is that Donna Gallant, who was here last time, she talked about um, how she was implementing some of the direct instruction skill sets in how she was delivering instruction, and she was yeah. seeing great gains in that. So we're seeing some of that. Also here in Rochester, what I'm seeing is a little bit more rigor and accountability and frequency in which students are being read with and questioned and asked some of the effective questioning strategies, which I, helps them think critically, which is essentially what this test is asking them to do is read a passage what did this vocabulary mean what did you know 
what is summarize it. So mm -hmm. different strategies by both that's helped us make some gains. And um, we actually just talked about Friday about how to start aligning those strategies yeah. together. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. No, I'm just curious. So, you know, you notice on grade four or five, six, there, there's improvement. What, you know, what, why, why with grade three is it lower um, now in January? So I would say a couple things. Uh, lots of absences in January. Okay. And our grade three group in both buildings are some of our smallest cohorts. Gotcha. And there are some kids that were absent. That doesn't account for all of it. I would say grade three and grade four are these huge pivot years where they're really supposed to, like, where it just changes very quickly in what you're supposed to know and how you need to know it and how to be a successful learner. Mm -hmm. And we're really noticing this and trying to hone in and what has been happening and what hasn't been happening and needs mm -hmm. to happen. It's definitely a red flag mm -hmm. for us because we want to see that growth rate up with um, where we see the other grades. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to go to the next slide, one celebration I think that I would share. Um, so this blue line, this district average scaled score is um, the average scale score we're seeing in the winter by grade. So that's the solid blue line. Okay. The um, like dash or the faded blue line that stars is what's meeting expectations based on scale score in the winter. And then the green is what's meeting state expectations for scale score in the spring. So you're already ahead. We're already spring. ahead in Oh, grade right. five. Grade five. And almost um, there in grade four. And yeah. when we get to the next slide, or you look at the chart at the bottom, you'll see this growth rate that we had, which is yeah. the next celebration. We're growing two times the state expectation. So that means while we're not where we want to be with everybody meeting the standard, we are growing mm -hmm. with the intent of closing the gap. Which, don't forget, you're growing during COVID. Yeah. I mean, that is an extraordinary thing where most schools are just barely trying to hold their head above, if not falling behind, or growing yeah. during COVID. And it's a huge uh, achievement. It bumps everything, I think, actually up virtually in some thinking. So if you look at that, for instance, grade three, that group that was mm -hmm. meeting, you know, we saw a decrease in who was meeting learning expectations for their grade level. You look at their scaled score as a group in the fall, it was 891. It's now jumped up to 937. They're still below where we want them to be in the winter as a group in the average, mm -hmm. but that growth rate is one of the largest mm -hmm. growths out of the group. So yeah. what it really tells us is that they potentially started as a group, I mean, did, knowing who I'm talking about, below standard from the get-go mm -hmm. and we're closing we're getting closer to closing those gaps mm -hmm. still plenty of work to do but so um and then again uh the other celebration when you kind of um just look at this group as a whole is we are just exceeding that growth rate at least two times the state expectation that's awesome in a short period so we're we're, we have plenty to do. I'm going to keep emphasizing that, mm -hmm. but we have plenty to do. Yeah, Parker, if you could go to that next slide, it'll show it a little clearer. Yep. Sorry. Start talking. It's that right hand column. Yeah, that right hand column, column that yes. growth rate compared to state expectations. Yeah. That's how you close gaps. You want to be two times, you know, two times yeah, the state three, expectation five, here. Yeah. So we're really, um, it's powerful. We're getting that's exciting. Yeah. It Again, is exciting. Well, to look at grade three in that, those terms as opposed to the bar graph, right. you know, is a, is a, is a, it's just a different way of looking at yeah. it, which is great. So, mm -hmm. and it shows the investment we put in our literacy instruction, and that mm -hmm. we still obviously have ways to go, because in my book, everybody's got to meet the standard. I just change it forever changes the kid's future. Um, but, and we're headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but like I said, grade three is that pivotal year that we really have to pay attention to and dig into, and that's what we're in the process of doing right now. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. If yeah. you want to go to math, 
Parker. Um, so some celebrations here, I would say, is in second and third grade. If you just look at the number of students or the percentage of students that are meeting or exceeding expectations, mm -hmm. you've got some big jumps there as well. Um, and uh, we can jump right to, I just like the next slide better. <laughs> we got the next slide. Because um, it just really shows that improvement level. Um, we are definitely, you know, grade one, not as many students were meeting or exceeding the expectations at this particular benchmark. But I do want to draw and point to your attention that if you look at that, again, that solid gold line for where we were in the fall, our scaled score above state expectations as an average, we were exceeding. Mm -hmm. okay. We're so, still exceeding that point right now in first grade. It's just not quite as much growth yeah. as we would like. And what you're going to notice is we've made improvements and we're growing, but not at the rate we need to be growing. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing some great things coming with the implementation of our new math. Uh, programs and that's great well, we're forget. also learning how to teach these math programs within a multi-age math class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which requires a little more finesse and is going to take some time and we're not even six months and we're six months I was going to say it. don't forget we've got two almost three years of reading right. curriculum um, going and this is just starting to turn the battleship um, and so what I will say again is some of our our lower third performer students have the largest growth this go around in mathematics it to be. what we need to add to the ongoing list of things to work on is how to make sure that the highest third is being challenged and that comes in mm -hmm. some differentiation in our instruction yep. and other um, strategies it's kind of why you see some of that you know that five six is pretty even with each other um, and we sixth grade math curriculum or program that we're using is called connected math and it's very different than bridges mathematics and it took us about two months to figure out how to run a five six multi-age with two different programs for yeah. mathematics oh wow so yeah. we are we finally implemented that there's still oh lots gosh. of rooms for improvement on how we do that and it's one of those things that unfortunately you have to figure out like what's working right now mm -hmm. and what will strengthen that next year I mean th you can't just stick with one it, um, bridges does not go to sixth grade oh, I got you. our math teacher did do an inventory of it and what you'll find with the bridges curriculum is it meets the five six standards mathematically mm -hmm. and the connected math meets the sixth and seventh grade standards mathematically so there's some material that they probably just haven't gotten to but we still need to keep Keep going. Great. Would you, that, would you have that little thought of this chart? Right. Yeah. So if we go to the next slide. So again, we want to be like t our yeah. growth rate compared to the state expectations. We want our growth rate to be two times or more because that means we're gaining ground. And we're yeah. doing that in second grade, which is awesome. We're very close to that in, fourth. in yeah. fourth grade. And we've got room to grow in fifth and sixth and first mm -hmm. grade. And I say all this, and they're an awesome group, but I also have to remind myself that in Rochester, it's an all new staff in the classroom. So not only are they um, implementing a new program, but this for some of them is their first go at teaching. And then in Stockbridge, we have a new second and third grade teacher too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and math is kind of the ultimate equalizer because they're all learning new together. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I have a question now. Yeah. Per se, sixth grade. Do you think it's imperative that we try to we try to up that? Like, do you see that these students moving into middle school, it's going to be a hard transition because it's not two times? Um, I think it's one of those areas where it is going to be a hard transition and yeah. the reason i say that is i think they just and i can speak um specifically to stockbridge and then also in rochester where it's different Rot stockbridge has not used a consistent mathematics program for a couple of years now 
Um, I believe the reason the program was picked was because it was free. That was the, for me. And then Stockbridge in Rochester, people were using bridges and some folks really well and some folks didn't have the training. So I think they're making great strides and we're seeing individual successes in certain parts of that area, but they definitely, um, if you look at how an individual did in the fall and how they did in the winter, there's a lot of growth. Yeah. But where they started at in the fall was yeah. further behind. Okay. So um, we're starting to see kids meet those expectations. And so, it's potentially the first time some of them have ever met even the right grade level expectation yeah. in their yeah. in yeah. their academic career. Gosh, Amy. Has these um, state expectations been adjusted for what's happened with COVID or is no, it hasn't. I, I don't believe so, right, Jamie? On that, I don't think so. Yeah. Right. So this is That's in same. a norm. This is in a normal year when kids right. have been able to go to school yeah. for and multiple years at a time, right, and not miss so much. So, yeah. so you know, with all that into uh, taken right. into account, and on um, as long as we're continuing to be working in the right direction, which it really sounds like we've got the programs there, we've we're, we're the bus is rolling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is there such a thing as direct instruction, and is this what Bonnie's doing for mathematics? So direct instruction is an instructional yes. tool, no, no. right? For reading, particularly. Uh, right? Well, there's seven effective strategies within it, within it that can be used in any setting. So are we doing so any direct instruction have, for mathematics? We have been trained, every, I say we, the collective we, mm -hmm. have trained in the universal strategies to use, mm -hmm. and people are beginning to implement those strategies. In terms of a program, it's different. What Bonnie is doing is she is in coaching folks at how to look to their data. So at an individual unit assessment, you look at it, like the pre-assessment and the post-assessment, you look at that data and it can tell you where a kid isn't meeting expectations and how to go back mm -hmm. and reteach or what, what support so a student might need. Mm -hmm. um, and she's working with folks on how to read that and where to go back and how to. I, I feel like we're, we're really, I'm looking to next fall, you know, what are, what are our tests in this in mathematics next fall? Let's see, let's see where we are there. I mean, I think this is fine right. for where we're headed. But I think by then you'll have a full year under your belt with a lot of these people. Hopefully with little turnover, you know, we'll get a lot of the same people back. And it feels confident. I feel confident that we're going to, you know, I know, I also, the math is always a bigger challenge than reading. I think. I for some. For, <laughs> many, <laughs> not for, you, not for, you. For, for a lot, I would say. And I don't know if I'm, maybe I'm generalizing, but I think that's my understanding is that it is a bigger challenge for a lot than, than reading. Um, so... I don't know. I think this is, I think this is good. Um, I would always, if you're going to present this in a public or in a school board meeting, or reverse your graphics. <laughs> don't bury the lead. The lead is this, this thing. We want to learn like everybody to be looking at the growth at rate, and then you show the charts, and the charts support that. that. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is this is the good news. Is right here is is your mm -hmm. last chart, and I think you want to put it first because. It's growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, exactly. not, there's not a negative number exactly. on that side. Because we it's, see a, you know, we see a bar and that just you think negative, and it right. drills into our head, and we go, wait, right. wait, look at that, no, look at that yeah. bar there. Whereas we see this growth rate, and if you can get that growth rate in a bar, then you're really, really gonna be able to sell people on this. That's great, um, though. Because I really think this is this is something I don't remember ever talking about this before. What the growth rate is. And I think it's extremely useful, yeah. both for us and for communicating with our public. Yeah. And this, the chart right before, I think is yep. very nice because it yeah. show, really shows, yeah. How yeah. Do you do? yeah, I think those other bar graphs, I don't know that they're helpful in yeah. some ways. Because you get there and you just go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you and go then, immediately to the, the yeah, 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 you see right. the discrepancy, and that's, that's not right. the story. There's a few over to the first part of the story. It is important. Yeah, I would rather, I I would rather you have to fill it in after than fill it in yeah. before. Got make it. your apologies after than make your, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. I mean, in, you know, somebody in public right. relations like Bill, what do you got to say? <laughs> I know you've got something. Um, two questions for Lindy. One is um, your team confidence in the programs that you the tools that you're using and right. utilizing and learning about and 
fine tuning everything else and reading the math are the ones that are going to lead, you feel, have confidence then to, to get us where we need to bring our students. That's the first question. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's wonderful because it seems like there's turmoil over time finding those, those right programs. Right, right. And it's pretty hard for a teacher, I don't care how talented it is, he or she is, if the tool isn't up to the task. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's very heartening. And the second question is, could you give us a little more flavor of how you take the data to your teachers, to individual mm -hmm. students? I read in your report, and I was just really excited about how you're your, your, your teacher teams and you're your talking, really getting down there, each student, what is this telling us about the student? What do we need to change, and emphasize, uh, or redirect? And c can you give a little more flavor on that? Because I just sure. think that was just so, yeah. um, so, that's there, really where, where it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so just fill us in a little bit, if you would, um, or tell so us a story. The first answer is blindly. If that makes sense, we take the student name off of it so it doesn't, you don't explain the student, you let the data tell the story. Good. And we really focused in, on, and this has been a shift in thinking, in looking at something like this growth rate one that you have, mm -hmm. um, to see the growth a student has made over a significant period of time. Because what was previously happening is there's this report you can run and it tells you who's meeting and who's not meeting the expectations and yep. you just get fixated on that one piece mm -hmm. instead of seeing the student has high growth rate individually and high proficiency meaning they have a good knowledge base of what's going on so we look at this report that tells us that students grow from so from last spring actually all the way to this winter and it tells each test date and it helps you do that and then from there the other strategy that we've taken is we look at a group as a whole a cohort of kids as a whole and see it can break it down for you by mastery skills or standards and where are they not meeting so it's color-coded red means for danger you know, yeah. <laughs> yellow is we're getting there, blue is we're meeting, and green is we're exceeding. And those standards that we're really in the red on, and you want to see growth. And so we're not just looking at, like, how a student grows over time, but we should so see those skills grow over time, too. So the percentage we should start to see. Yeah. And that's where we're looking. So Tuesday and Friday of next week, we have a half day Friday next week. We are looking in grade alike teams with the specific direction of here are the two areas, skills, that we are in the red on by a grade cohort. We're going to make goals around those and how we're going to meet those instructionally. Because mm -hmm. we constantly tell teachers that they're the first level of intervention but we don't really take the time to implement it. Yeah. And so we're trying to flip the switch. And one of the pieces of feedback when we originally looked at data as a group is we went down a rabbit hole. It was not, it was a learning experience for all, myself included, about like we're, we're fixated on the wrong thing, we're missing the mark. We gotta pull it back in and look at it. And so what should have come out of that conversation is our students struggle with place value and the understanding of place value. That was the area that was glaring across the board, no matter what grade level we looked at. Which is in like a thousand. Right, like what a thousand. What is each money? One thousand one hundred ten right. ones. And if you don't understand place value, you can't do multi-digit addition, subtraction, multiplication. The list goes on and on. We went down the road of how, what, who's teaching time and money, and when are they teaching it? Mm -hmm. So we had to rein it back in and look. And so now the feedback has been, we like to look at it, but be really specific with us. Where do we need to focus our instruction? Yeah. And yeah. so that is, we're gonna talk about our celebrations and that, and then they're gonna break in teams. Greater Lake teams, they like to work together. One of the parts the staff do not like about being in a small school is that there's only one of them at their grade level. So they like to be in these, cohorts 
Um, and they're going to set some pretty specific goals with the idea that these goals, these action steps in our instruction should move our student success as a cohort in those standards or skills. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's great. So, um, I would love to sit in on a meeting. I mean, I know it's not our place, but it's like in some ways I'd love to see Fly that on happen. The wall. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, we are at 41 okay, for board, or, no, no, for, yes, for yeah. reports well, to the board. On, I think go for a while. Thank you very much. Yeah. This has been, you know, I don't want to shut you. No, 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 I think no, you're no. absolutely right. I think answer. we need to, I think that's, that's great. And if you can save further questions yeah. for after, but this is, uh, Fun to talk uh, I about. think it's like Jamie said, we're not talking about COVID. It's yeah, very this is this exciting. is <laughs> this is the stuff we want to be talking about. Exactly, exactly. This and the celebrations of learning, and then we could go home. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, we can't quite yet. Comment. Very good. Um, let's move on. Business manager, please, Tara. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. Um, just a few highlights to point out before we get to the discussion items at the bottom. Um, we did apply for the local food service grant, and hopefully we will uh, be recipients of that. And then we will start um, purchasing more local produce uh, throughout the state of Vermont. We also, effective January 1, got notification from the USDA that they've increased the reimbursement rates for meals, so we'll get about an extra 25 cents per lunch for the remainder of the school year. So that was some good news. And then on the discussion items, we'll talk about the budget later on, your quarter two projections. So in quarter two, Parker, if you wanna put that up on the screen, please. We continue to look at um, what we had already looked at the first time around, your salaries, budget versus contracted. Uh, we have a projected savings right now of $79,250. Health insurance, budget versus enrollment. And this is updated based on after open enrollment happened in January. We'll have about $17,895 savings there. And then the tuition I've added for this quarter, your budget versus invoiced to date. And it looks like we'll have a savings of about $216,934 there, giving us a projected expenditure savings of $314,079. And then Parker, uh, if you can go to the second page. That, that tuition can come in, because that just means it hasn't been invoiced doesn't mean we don't know that there's a kid in a school that hasn't been paid for yet. Okay. So this is the revenue side. We have on the tuition, this is what we have invoiced for students attending Rochester Stockbridge. So we have about a $16,950 difference there. We've gotten more Pre-K tuition at $14,144. Interest income, we're getting more than we budgeted for. We've gotten a little bit additional miscellaneous income that has come in from some donations. Uh, we have rental that came in. And we have the forestry grant, another $342 for donations. We'll expect to get the $9,000 from the trustees of public funds. And then the next section is what we get from the state based on property taxes, the ed fund, the uh, state tech ed funding, that's what they pay on our behalf, and then the transportation aid. And then the next section down is our grants and our Title I and Medicaid, I've adjusted based on what the actual allocations were and our most recent um, consolidated federal grant amendment. So you can see in the next section, we are projecting right now a $300,881 surplus at the close of second quarter. And then the next section down is your summary of financial operations. I updated this based on the FY21 final audit. So we just, again, we review the fund balances from 19, 20, and 21. And then the next section down is the surplus that you used in each year to offset revenue. And then the last section is your capital project fund for the reserve fund balance. 
which is $109,572. Any questions on the quarter two projections? No, we'll be talking about the, um, the, the general fund balance a little bit later, right? Okay. Yeah, in the, in the how you guys, yeah, how how to use that revenue um, to put money away in a in a reserve fund versus offsetting expenditures. Is that what you're talking about, Amy? In next year's budget process? Uh, that yeah, that and just understanding you know exactly where we are, um, what number it is we're looking at for that for that general fund surplus. So when we when we get to that, that's fine. I I just didn't know now was the time to clear it up. Wait. I'm so, sorry, I'm confused about your question. Okay, I'm. Because we said we were going to talk about. Right, funds. funds. Okay, so we're going to talk about funds, and is, maybe is that maybe, the time to do it now, Tara? Or are you done with well, the report? That's the next section of my report, but I just I need to make sure I understand what gen what general fund balance, Amy? Are you specifically talking about? Are you talking about FY twenty one or this is FY twenty two projection? Right, I'm 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 just at, I was wondering about. Um, see, I get confused with the years, but it's. It's the money that if we want to put it, the money that if we want to put it into a fund that we are able to do at this time, what, you know, the calculation from of all the, that. From the um, surplus? No, it wouldn't be like, right, it's, it's what the, what's the bottom line that we're talking about to put into, into a, a reserve fund? That's, I guess, the question. I think it's in the column on your budget. Okay, so yes, that is in the... FY23 budget discussion. Okay. What your <clears throat> FY21 general fund surplus is that you can utilize to put into additional reserve funds. Yes. Okay. We're on the same page. So the next two attachments that I sent to you with my report was right out of your FY21 oh. audit. Excellent. The first one is the permanent fund balances. Sorry, where are we? Next, uh, back to. Parker, it's the RSUD permanent fund balances sheet. The next page after where oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. No, These no, are no, no, no. The specific reserve of. Uh, actual permanent funds, how they are recorded in your audit. So it's your Cowdery Fund, your Wing Fund, the Kirkpatrick Fund, and the Rochester School Fund for Excellence. So you can see that last line, the fund balances as of June 30th, that's the balance that's currently in each of those funds. And this is the research that, Amy, I believe you can fill the board in on what each of these funds can be utilized for and i think you touched on it briefly before yeah each fund does have some specific language um in it for what it can be used for um and you know i without going into big detail because i don't want to now I, I would maybe be able to present it better next meeting um but the cowdery fund um is not accessible to us yet. It needs needs to have a specific balance before we're allowed to use any of the money. Um, the Wing Fund is a specific Rochester scholarship fund, so that is specifically for graduates to for scholarships. No. Um, the uh, Rochester School Fund for Excellence um, is kind of a um, a uh, uh, principal's discretion kind of a fund, but there is some specific um, requirements on that. And it was, um, there's a lot of language in it for uh, student activities and for um, uh, uh, sports type stuff. Um, so, you know, th that's kind of just an overview. I, I would be happy to next meeting um, or even before that, put together a, a better, um, a more specific 
um, description for each of them. And the Kilpatrick? Uh, the Kilpatrick, um, the Kilpatrick was, is not a very restricted fund. It's quite open. Okay. So first hire so me. So these funds you do not contribute to. These are investments right. that were set up previously. So this, you don't have any contributions into these funds. Right. These are funds that are available to you based on how the programs and the funds were set up. And right. And, and along with that, I'm sorry, to, I, I should say there is specific specifics of how much money from each fund can be taken each year. Yeah. So, um, you know, whether it was just the, the amount of um, interest income that happened throughout the, the course of the year, which often it is. Um, there, so, so along with what they can be used for, there's a specific amount that can be used. So I can get that, we can meet and get that can all together, because I, I would love to download to that out. How to access. Like it's well, when I work with, with the Stockbridge trustees, there's a process Phil and I go okay. through it together. Right. So well, you, well it together. would be um, yes. Let's definitely have let's a please schedule time. a meeting about that with Stuart. So the, and and that that there's no money in the total expenditures means we've taken no money out of this for how many years? Right. Expenditures would have been if we'd used some of this money. That is correct. Yes, so we have not used any of it. Taken from the we funds. That's where the, they would well, show in the exhibit. Yeah, so we have not structure. taken any. Is this, and this is just right. this year, or has it been since the uh, uh, dissolution have, of the high school? We have not drawn on these funds since the, the dissolution of the high school. Okay. The, the, there is the wing fund specifically. We need to uh, change the language in. We need to actually go to probate to be able to access oh. that. Okay. Um, but, um, right, we had not because it took some time. It took time to, to figure okay. it all out and work it all out. No, because that's fine. I just unfortunately, to... this was not something that anybody really had mm -hmm. and handed over yeah. to okay. any yeah. one of us or to anyone. It was. So thank you. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, but I definitely for... am excited to be able to. Yes. Um, Pass this to, on so to that, use yeah. these Amy's funds. Yeah, done a ton of work. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah. These, I mean, I remember. To speak to me. So she had to, to jump in and hit for this. So you did a great job. Amy. Well, yeah. we, were, we were talking about this four years ago. I mean, I remember when you first sort of were raising your hand about it, saying, what about this? Yeah. So I'm so glad that you've stuck with this and, and gotten some clear answers. So thank you. Yeah. Um, that's really, really great work. Yeah, it's uh, Ethan. One of the terms you use is transparency, and yeah. we need the information. And with the information, we can be transparent, yeah. and you've done that both. And um, yeah, I think this is is, is dynamite. Um, I think uh, we certainly have information that we can share, and this I think this format's a good one for the Stockbridge um, funds that are independent from the schools, but. Uh, some of them directly support the schools, and other ones um, uh, can indirectly, uh, depending on the situation. So, um, and it's, and I think this school board needs to be aware of this, and certainly our principal does, uh, to be able to tap it the right I way. I think that that is very true, and I would like us to try to work towards, it, it, this transparency comes from a lack of, information being passed on to new members yes. is not an, a not a specific like trying not to, it's, it's that nobody knows and so if we could set something up that so that the next people who step into these roles know what we have what we're doing what's supposed to be done right on right so, on great thank you for doing this yeah very much so. okay then your only actual reserve fund that exists right now is the construction reserve fund. And that's the one I just had at the bottom of the quarter two projection. And the uh, second attachment is the RSED construction projects fund. So the balance on that one is $109,572. And I made a note on this one that you'll see we did use some of those funds this year, as you recall, um, for the Stockbridge generator project. So we've used $44,552.57, leaving a current balance of $65,019.43. Right, and this fund is a Rochester Stockbridge Unified District fund, but it is specific to the Stockbridge campus. 
Okay. Correct. Well, it got rolled over that way. It like got it merged when you merged the district. Yes, it was what the fund balance was in Stockbridge prior to the merger. This correct and what? The, okay, I I understand. I have a but it can be used on either campus now that it's rolled over. I have a fe I have a feeling though that we need to um, uh, move this into the Stockbridge specific um, reserve fund because this. It uh, was Stockbridge, this is building fund, and the and um, so it, it could be part of our conversation for funds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does the fund conversation? Fund 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 conversation. Does the fund conversation need to happen before the budget? I mean, in terms of getting the vote voted on, or can we? Yeah, we need to do it at, the, at it has to be voted on by the elect. By the, so if we decide right? to put another fund or to redo a fund, it needs to be voted on by May. Um, it has to be an article on your warning. Yeah. To okay. to when you want to make when you want to create a fund or you want to move surplus funds into a reserve fund. It has to be an article on your warning. So the once the fund is established, it is the directive of the board to use the fund. So we could, we can move uh, surplus money into existing funds without yes. the the vote of the electorate. No. Oh, okay. If we have existing there funds, there has to be an article on your warning that says. To allow the board to move X number of dollars from the X year surplus to this reserve fund, your voters have to vote and approve that. They have okay. to, and then once it's done and they've approved that, you have to go back to the voters to use the money. You as a board can decide to use the money just like you did on the Stockbridge generator. But okay. you have to, you have to specifically call it out in your warning, creation of funds. Or moving surplus to funds. Okay, then I would. I'm very interested as to um, the creation and the uh, movement of this this money into a general construction fund because I believe that the funds that were set up were spe campus specific. Is there a campus specific fund for Rochester and not just stop? Like now, this is. Both, but started the Stockbridge. Is there one that was specific to Rochester? So, um, that this is kind of just the question that to to clarify because in our um, uh, May twenty second two thousand eighteen uh, meeting annual meeting, we had articles that were voted on to set up reserve funds um, to to put money future capital improvements and to maintenance of the district's facilities in, in Stockbridge in such amounts as the board of directors determines appropriate. Article three, article four was the same thing for Rochester. Article five was um, for uh, secondary tuition expenses. So we, in theory, have three funds set up already. And so what fund is this in? Good question. So the way this was set up, was just a capital project fund this was not specific to a campus so if this fund needs to be renamed i can do that in our financials but i would go back to the fy 17 audit right for each individual district to verify what the balance was if there was said balance at either building right okay. yeah so yeah it's good yeah. so because by the vote there's three funds but we're seeing the results of just one fund a combined fund i'm just trying to understand this right and just from my historical knowledge this was stockbridge's um, construction fund that they brought into our merger and we set it up to make sure that Stockbridge it was campus specific because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that was just that was important important um, so I want to make sure that that continues well um, we have I, I guess the question is we have by this vote the funds were established 
And so where That's are they? Right. So looking at your 18 audit for Rochester, there is no construction fund. I know. At the end of 18. I know there, there's no, there was no fund, right. We created, there's we, no actual money. There's no monies and we established. So looking at Stockbridge at the end of the 18 audit, their construction fund had $44 in it. Okay, I think we need to do a little investigating on this yeah. then. It's not something we can resolve now. Yeah, um, yeah. so let's. I'll, I would, don't mind helping you dive into this. I was historic, I was there, so uh -huh. I'm no, sure I, I have notes on it. <laughs> no, I appreciate you bringing up. And, oh, absolutely. If it's voted on and exists, yeah, we just need to know where it is. And and where this what we're looking at here came from. Right. Ethan, yeah. can I say something to the board? Up to me. I think that you know moving forward is as a district, if you have a surplus that and again, we don't have to decide this tonight, by the way. Um, if you approve the budget, you can decide how much you want to set aside to put in reserve funds. And then when we do the warning, you can decide how much we're gonna put into eat per you know, that we're gonna recommend you put in front of the voters to put forward for a vote for each reserve fund. And if that's voted down, then what the default is, is that really goes back to the taxpayers as revenue, just so folks know. So if, if the voters vote down putting a general fund surplus into a special reserve fund, then by statute, it goes toward revenue to offset expenditures in the following year budget. So that's, that's one. Two, I really think this concept of having reserve funds that are district reserve funds moving forward could serve you really well. And I think we should do our research to see if that, you know, where did this current R sub money come from? So far we've used it to pay for the, the Stockbridge generator and make certain that we have that accounted for, Amy. But I do think the board should think about the idea moving forward if the, the uni unified district um, has, uh, general fund surplus that you set up some reserve funds that that can be used across the unified district. Uh, I I think I would say with I think we have a lot more political capital to do that kind of thing now mm -hmm. than we did two years ago or even a year ago. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's part of this tussle that we're dealing with right now is the feeling of. But um, I think it's also something very worthwhile to put in front of the voters and say, separate or together. Um, or but we need to know we need to know first what the what the paper trail is for what's in front of us and what got voted on. Right. First. And then. Right. Yeah. Can we can we move on from here? Do we feel like we're ready? And, oh yeah, that's yeah. A bit, the manager's Good. report. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, are you all done, yeah, Tara? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just one note. Um, this is important stuff. Um, the reason we had money for the stock generator is because we had a capital reserve fund. Mm -hmm. Now, one reason we have a capital reserve fund is to have unanticipated costs or opportunities. We have the financial ability to act. Right. And so it's a very prudent, a very strong, these monies can sit there, build up until at such time they're needed. But the concept is very sound. I agree with Jamie and I, and then Amy, this is important and we should consider that if we have a projected surplus, how much goes to reducing uh, the tax burden and how much needs to be set aside for capital infrastructure needs in the future. We know we're going to have them. Right. But at the same time, if we're putting that money into the infrastructure, that can help the burden of the tax. Yes, it certainly right. can. Yeah. It's it's can to can. Yeah. You know. yeah. It's a question of when it is. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Good. Moving on. 8.4 to our VSU negotiations committee. Not me. Not you. Him. Well, it's, it's Bill and I, and, and Bill, fill in any gap I miss, but. I would just say that they've been really productive conversations. Uh, tomorrow night we'll have our, or sorry, Thursday night, we have our third uh, sit down with the uh, teachers 
Um, and I would say that, you know, we, we've already approved ground rules. We've been able to do some tentative agreements already. It, it's just, it's been, uh, I think, a really productive and positive uh, uh, negotiations thus far. Is that fair, Bill? I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, the tenor, just the reports, both at the SU meetings and here, the tenor of the talks, the mood of them just seems so good. And I appreciate, I applaud you for that because uh, it's always the way we want to negotiate with people, I, I hope. Good. Thank you. Uh, WRBSU Energy Committee. Um, so the Energy Committee met um, with EEI services uh, last month. They have another meeting uh, next week. And just so the board knows, you're going to get your initial uh, presentation from EEI next month. The rest of the boards will receive them this month. You're early in the month. So I said I would let them roll with you um, in March, just so they felt like they were well prepared. So they're going to give you their initial thoughts uh, and sentiments in regards to the audits that they did at Rochester Elementary and Stockbridge Elementary. And just to re uh, uh, reinforce what you said at the SU meeting, they're giving us a three, right? They're giving us three possible scenarios. Yep. Boilerplate, um, basic, and then best possible. We get to choose. And then they give us the tax benefit or you know the payoff benefit. Uh, 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 of that. I didn't use the correct terms there, but just no, you're, so you know. you're right, Ethan. I think this first initial proposal will be just a little more of an overview of what they're finding and yeah. kind of project the baseline of what that might be um, and get just a sense from the board about what direction they might want folks to go, want them to go from there. Um, and then they'll have a more full report the following month. Okay. Good. Any questions on that? Let us get to 9.1 discussion items. Draft four of the 22-23 budget and corresponding revenue and tax sheet. Possible action. I cannot believe how much the tax rate changed by changing the the per, the, the oh, pure oh, oh, oh. pupil by a by point something. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's why we always talk about those equalized pupils, Amy. It was point 14, now it's point 95, and it changed the tax rate by like, is it, what was it, like a cent? Yeah. I mean, it's un unbelievable, or, or a whole percentage or something. Yeah. So I did not make any changes to the expenditure budget. It is what it, the same that we presented last month. So the overall increase again is $101,633 or 2.35%. And again, as a reminder, we had a reduction in the budget. Sorry, not a reduction in the budget, a small increase. Yes, we did. $43,199. There we go. I can get my words out. <laughs> On the revenue side... Parker, if you want to switch over to the revenue one, sorry, I'm moving fast on you tonight. So the top note right there is specific to the surplus. This is your unassigned fund balance that you can use to offset revenue or present to your voters to put into a reserve fund. We're using 150,000 of that $284,554. As offsetting revenue. So the remaining balance is what you can request from the voters to move to reserve funds. And you can do that. Um, can you give me that? Articles. And you can decide which reserve funds you want to use it for. If there's, I know there was talk in the past about creating another reserve fund. So this would be the time that you would want to do those things and have those conversations so that you know what you want on your warning for this meeting in so May. It's it's two eight four five five four minus one hundred and fifty. Yes. What's the amount? Please, I just have a calculator. 
Jamie, just put it in the comments. Five, five, well, Once again, Jamie. 134. 134. One at a time. <laughs> Hit Jamie. 134,554 dollars. Good. All right, so do we want to go through that now then? So let's finish your budget first, okay? Yeah. I like that. Let's do one thing at a time, otherwise I'm gonna get all confused. <laughs> so if you could go to the tax sheet, Parker, Yep, so that's at the end of the budget. <laughs> I just found that. The only change I made, we received a, another round of equalized pupil from the Agency of Education. So the <laughs> new number for you is that 175.95, which was an increase from the 175.14. So where you stand now, all the other factors remain the same. Um, you have a 0 0.0268 reduction in Rochester and a 0 0.0436 increase in Stockbridge, solely based on the CLA in each town. Right. So did it, did that change our equalized tax rate? Yes. Yes, yeah, so your equalized tax rate is at 1.4935. Right, which, which is now um, compared to the current year, I had this last one was 13 cents lower. What's the current year? Oh, it's right above it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The equalized tax rate at FY22 was $1.6359 after the two cent merger incentive now it is 1.4935 i mean that's a huge decrease in in your tax rate that's that's uh, unfortunately it doesn't show in once the cla gets factored in there but five nine i just found the calculator 1.4935 yes yeah, that's 14 14 cents mm -hmm. lower that we've lowered the tax rate. You've lowered the tax rate 14 cents. Right, they, right, the equalized tax rate. The yeah, equalized about, tax rate. We talked about this last time. Yeah. What's, no, 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 it's good. Um, uh, there was the letter that came out from the state, Bill, we were talking about it earlier in our meeting or midday today, that something was coming out. Jamie, yeah, please address this. It's, it's, about, the, it's about the yield, and we're using. They gave us two yield numbers. We're using the more conservative yield. If, for example, the governor, he, he has um, requested that the legislature use half of the current surplus in the Ed Fund for one-time expenses, uh, specifically capital improvements. So we're using the yield if that is supported by the legislature. Um, I think it's, it's the wise yield to use. I don't foresee them giving back the whole $80 million surplus um, that was realized in the Ed Fund. Um, and a big part of that, just so folks know, is, is that we had significant revenue come in uh, from federal monies due to COVID-19 relief, um, both here at the local level, but also at the state level. Um, and so we're using a more conservative yield figure. And I, I would strongly suggest that we do that because all it means is that your tax rate could get better if the legislature votes on a yield um, that's higher, what, what I would not want to do is have us use um, the other yield and then have the legislature decide that they're going to use some of that surplus for one-time money um, and have taxes end up being higher than we're projecting. Yeah. Good. So, uh, Bill. so what does that look Jamie, where does that leave us? Is is what we're looking at likely possibly to get worse? Or no, I would say that this, I feel like this is where we're going to be based on the info we have. And if anything, it could get better. It won't get worse. Okay. And when will that news uh, you uh, forecast or target forecast? It tends come? to happen toward the end of the legislative session, Bill. 
Um, and sometimes we know it actually before your voters go to vote. Um, and we're able to provide that at the informational meeting um, because you do vote in May, but it's to be determined. Uh, typically, it's one of the last things that they actually set uh, oh. because they'll wait to see what how they decide to to utilize different surplus funds, sort of like what we're talking about for you guys in regards to revenue and and, and versus um, putting it away in, in reserve funds. So we, hence, they gave us two figures and why we're using the more conservative figure. So I guess a lot of this we talked about last meeting, um, you know, just in terms of tax rates and the different stream rates. Um, are we ready to move this? I feel I'm happy with that. I feel yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I think let's yeah. Things we can talk about how we how we sell it is a whole different matter. But I think I think um, somebody want to. I just put the motion language in comments. Thank you very much. Somebody. Yeah, it disappeared from us. Anybody so. got comments? It's got to be somebody who's virtual. Robert, you want to do it for us? I, I'm sorry, I didn't ask, didn't hear what you asked. It's, uh, the move is in the text. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I will entertain a motion to accept this budget uh, using the language presented there. I hereby move to accept the 22-23 budget and the amount of four million four hundred. Thirty thousand three hundred eighty-five, with an estimated per pupil cost of nineteen thousand three hundred twenty-one dollars and eleven cents. So we have that is moved by Amy Wilt, seconded. Second. Second, Second by Bill Edgerton. Uh, any discussion? And I'll do a roll call. Patrick Hudson. Aye. Aye. Amy Wilt. Aye. Justine Kavakis. Aye. Robert Mayer. Aye. Ethan Bowen. Aye. We got a budget. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more complicated than me? Um, well, this is a nice one to have after that. 9 4, Rochester High School building use request, possible action assistant. You're jumping. I'm jumping. I always jump in. Annual meeting logistics and mailer. That's a different matter. Okay. Good. So, so just to, I know we want to continue to move forward, but we do have that reserve fund money of 134,554. And so it sounds like you have a tuition reserve fund set up. I heard that. Is that accurate? Amy? Yes. Yes, so, I do. I mean, I would I would strongly think that we might want to consider at least putting what we would project a couple tuition students in that to try to start building that up in the event that you have a sudden you know influx of tuition students. That's what we've been doing in other um, sending districts, choice districts, um, and it's I think it's served those boards well. And then the other thing um, is, is certainly the more you can put in a capital improvement fund as we're trying to, to do this work with EI, it makes great sense. So I, I really think it's thinking about, do you wanna to contribute to the, the tuition reserve in addition to the capital improvement? Just because I, I really do believe you need to put some money away for this, this upcoming work. This needs to be decided on uh, before we put our warning together for our annual meeting, correct? So correct. we can discuss, but don't need to be decided on right yeah. tonight it well, does need to be decided tonight although we will bring you draft warnings next meeting correct tara so nice to have some ballpark numbers i mean we can about. change them that meeting but we'll at least have your drafts put together so oh, yeah. if you go by like your most expensive tuition student it's 19 and change per per head Nineteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. it's right. nice to put a couple in there so right 20 so, uh, no, uh, 20, 40. That you have 134. Can I ask that, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we ask uh, staff, Jamie, to give us a recommendation for our next meeting on the capital side and the, the reserve, and and we, we can do this here, but um, yeah. I, I, I like to keep moving on, and then we'll have their input 
and why, and then we they have a better sense. And, of and we all agree it. that we should contribute to both oh, type yeah. of files. Yeah. We should put some in a. It'd be nice to match. I mean, that's into the generator. Just so we're back to yeah, that's a good where idea. we were at. So that's ten. Two tuitions is forty. Okay. And then, well, I do agree that we should let them come up. Yeah, let's get yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, say it doesn't hurt to throw numbers out. So we have some idea of what you're going to be talking about. So I'm just sorry, I'm writing. So I'm that's, thinking if we could get in the habit of putting away for a couple of tuition students every year, if we have the opportunity, and then mm -hmm. in putting other in capital improvement. And my goal would be that we start to dwindle down what we have to use uh, in revenue. Right, like I'd like to start decreasing how much money we're using as offsetting revenue from um, potential surplus money. So yeah. know that going in the, as we move forward, that 150 you just saw, I'd like to get that down um, over time. So oh, then my brain just went off. Never mind. It'll come back to me. Well, I, oh, I'm here to put a, to, I'm here on a recommendation that we come forward to you. Uh, with some reasoning around why we're we're recommending a certain amount in in um, tuition reserve and in your capital improvement. Are we are we should we agree that we want to use all of it or just some of it? Well, you, we really need to use all of it. You have an audited surplus now. Yeah, and you can you basically the the way the warning, the article reads on the warning, is up to the total surplus amount what's available after you take off that 150 so what what you had that 134 554 the actual article will read that we're going to move x dollars of the fy21 audited surplus of 134 blah 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 it will read that in your actual warning so, so at the end of the day yes you have to use up that 200 Right. So by not putting, by not having money to carry over into revenue for the next year, what does that do for for us? Because I mean, that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is quite a bit of revenue that we're putting into our budget. Does that mean we're going to need to decrease our budget by, well, you know, we're we're projecting a surplus again this year. <laughs> so that's why we're working hard to have a surplus. <laughs> and then again, Amy, what we'll do is hopefully go from one hundred and fifty down to 100 and it will start to dwindle that down would be the goal so you're not relying on a surplus every year as an offsetting revenue should we but be conservative that, right you know what i mean mm -hmm. should we be conservative in how much money it's we put into these funds what do you mean by conservative well I we mean, have to either give it all back or you put it in the fund you don't get to hold it well, how? Oh, okay. So we don't get to pick. No. No. So we just we just put 150 into revenue to decrease your tax rate, and because we used 173 last year, so we just started dwindling it down. And what we're saying is, is that if it gets, if the voters say no, we don't want to put this money in the reserve fund. This is the voters' money. So what they what that means is they're saying no, we want it all for revenue. And then at that point, Amy, then that that's why we have to educate them about why we're not putting it all toward revenue, because that would create an even bigger hole for us for next year. Well, in some ways, the terminology, I think, uh, is misleading. We talk about surplus, but any organization that has a capital plant has a depreciation fund. That's expensed out in public uh, financing. We don't have a depreciation fund. And that depreciation fund is monies that are set aside for capital improvements. Uh, rainy day, whatever you want to say it. So we don't really have a surplus, but we don't have a depreciation fund. How are we going to be prepared if we've got an extraordinary this, that, what? So prudent management says that part of our budgeting, we have an operating budget, which we just passed, and we have a capital budget. Mm -hmm. And we should be looking at them combined. And it, the net result is zero. Right now we say we have a surplus, so that's, but we don't have a capital budget right now. What should our capital budget be moving forward for this next year? 
And uh, we talked about uh, the tuition set aside. That's, that's real. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, but we know we're going to have capital needs and prudent management says we need to have a, have money set aside to be able to do that wisely and prudently. So um, I'd like to encourage us on our going forward. And, and Jamie, you talked about your concern about the condition of our buildings and the need for a capital program. Uh, do we have a budget that's both operating and capital? And we decide how much goes into both. What's the tax impact? And we decide. And so we have a great opportunity now to set that up going forward. And I, I look forward to getting the recommendation from the superintendent. Oh, I think we understand that now. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, then. Sure. You're welcome. <laughs> this is all exciting talk, by the way, versus how we're going to pay off debt. <laughs> <laughs> we don't operate yes, it that. Is, we don't operate that. Way Thank you for here. reminding us of that. This is actually a good this decision. Is a good to be, it's a good problem. <laughs> <to address. laughs> right. What's that? Just surplus. You don't spend money, you don't have. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Are we ready for 9-2? Yes. 9-2. Annual okay. meeting logistics and ten mailer. Minutes. I'm going to keep you on 10 minutes. Good luck. Okay. Um, Tara did forward me the cost of our um, last budget, which I thought I brought so we could look at, but I guess not, um, what was color and, and how big it was. Mm -hmm. And um, we got 1,135 of them, and it cost us um, just shy of uh, $3,000. So it's not too bad for, for how big of a publication it was and how much color we had in it. Just to put it out there, when you're comparing what we want to do this year, mm -hmm. take a look at what we did last year and how sure. much it cost. And as far as getting Can it, I make uh, a suggestion? Yes. Can I take our, I did not connect with Jenny. We've connected about a lot of things, but not about this. Can I take our example from last year in our draft? I, you know, I have all those documents. Mm -hmm. Share them with our communications person, Kate McLean, who would willing, you know, who would work on it. And Kate and I work on it together to put forward a draft for you guys for next time. Do you to have look time for A lot of it's all there. It's okay. about compiling the right information. Um, mm -hmm. And we can at least get a jumping off point versus there's a lot of other things on here. I don't want to rush anyone through, but I feel like we now have a really good foundation of what's laid out and yeah. explained. Yeah. And so that's then we can of, at least just jump forward and have a draft. And if you guys have comments, then you can bring it back. Well, so that's I think that's what was kind of the purpose of doing such an uh, in-depth one is so that hopefully it could be a, a yeah. template yeah. that just yeah. the new information could be put exactly. on. Exactly. And um, if we need to do additions, we have some time. Yeah. We so, like pie charts. And, and, <laughs> and it is, yeah. there is really certain like things that are, that are just really important to be in color. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and yeah. just um, yes. from assembling it, it is it is done in, you have to think of this page and this page are getting printed together. So that means this page and this page are getting printed yeah. together, which yeah, means yeah, 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 no. all the way down. So if this one's color, then you know you try to make that one color right. because that you, you're paying for it anyway. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and after like working that. with Kate on the website. This is like her wheelhouse. Okay. Wow. So, I think she's, so yeah, well, I, I, think, I think that'd be great. Because you guys have made the template. Which yeah, I we, think we've definitely got a clear idea. I think what would behoove all of us is to take a look at last year, flip through it, and just see if there's anything that jumps out at you that's like, hey, I remember now, I wish we'd explain this better. Because I, um, I think that's really, you know, the numbers, the budgets that's set right now the su budget and all that that's set right but explanations is always what we want to again the transparency we always want to increase our, our our ability to communicate what we're doing and what these numbers mean one of the things i felt like we still didn't quite get fully to is the annotation of the budget and a way to really put almost not line by line but at least maybe a third an extra column that allowed for Real. This means this the, means this language, means language this. that explains the numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. or just you know, this section. Notice that the, and, and things that like one of the things I think 
you'll see the same codes with different prefixes, you'll see the same code in a bunch of different places and explaining what that means. Mm -hmm. We want an educated electorate. Okay, I we have been doing such wonderful celebrations of learning. I think it's really important that we pop those. Uh -oh. <laughs> we got 53 seconds. Keep going. I'm um, I think that it's important that we have some some celebrations of learning in there, and not just the letter from the principal and, and the yes. letter from yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. You know. I think our, this, those things could be shorter. <laughs> They're still there. Good, good. Right. You know, whatever it is, uh, the pictures, a preschool picture that we're talking about now. I don't know what it is. I, just put that, that we back on. We'd also That's put the, I don't know if you remember, we put it out there that we wanted to put it out to the teachers. A little more feeling. <laughs> but to put it out to the yeah. teachers of what they thought, the, and maybe the students too, the student council, what they thought the cover should be. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, I mean, you know, I've, I've had some fun playing with that, but also if your your okay. person wants to work on that, that's fine. Okay. Um, I like that. I think okay. if you have time for that, I mean, I don't yeah. want to put something. Well, no, I think if, if you don't mind liaison, I mean, you know, and, and right. let us know. Because um, this is say, I'm thrilled that I didn't, because two years ago, last year and two years ago, pretty much Ginny and I, well, Ginny did, I don't know, it doesn't matter. We did a lot on it, and it's nice not to have to worry about it. Okay. And so the other one, I'm sorry, it, th that line item, the discussion item also says annual meeting logistics, not just the mail. Yeah. Yeah. So these are actually important things. So, well, not that the mailer wasn't, but I need motions on certain oh, things to, really to speak to how we're going to move forward in your warnings. Right. And so one is whether or not you plan to still move forward with an in-person meeting or not. So the legislature provide you two, uh, two provisions. Um, actually three. One was you could move to, you can move your in-person meeting uh, to a later date to try to make it so that folks could access um, an in-person meeting more safely, like maybe outside. Two, it would allow you to hold your meeting uh, via Australian ballot like you did last year. Um, and then three, they they provided the provision for you to hold an informational meeting virtually. Um, if you felt like that's the route you wanted to go. And then four, if you do vote Australian ballot, they'll allow you to not have to commingle the, the ballots so that they can count in each town and then report them out as a whole. So that's all been taken up and signed by the governor. Um, and if so, I've got three districts that are holding their uh, meetings at their normal times, but via Australian ballot. And I've got one district that's going to delay till May and hold it in person. And um, I believe Granville Hancock's going to hold theirs at their normal meeting date via Australian ballot in May. And then we haven't really discussed that part, I don't think. So those are some of the logistics that we need. You don't actually have to decide that tonight, but you definitely would prior to adopting the warning. Uh, next month. So those are just some things I wanted to put out there and just see where folks are at around it. And you may say you want to wait till next month to see what the data is doing. And I don't know what your towns are planning on doing. Um, I haven't heard. Uh, Stockbridge is having their town meeting. Um, Australian ballot uh, is pushed back to March, I believe, 22nd. Oh, rather than the first Tuesday. Virtual as well. Uh, virtual. Yeah. Yeah, probably. What do we got? Do you have a. I mean, probably is the best way to get the most attendance. Well, honestly. Virtual. No live. Justine, what's your take? I, I feel the same way as Amy. I think it's the best way to get the most attendance. And just, I think it's, it would be best. We're talking about then an informational meeting. Um, well, that's what it would be. It's yeah. an informational meeting, and then we would have Australia uh, yeah, instead of a meeting at both. That's correct. Right. Yeah. yeah, you by by statute you would have to have a, a virtual informational meeting um, within ten days of the Australian ballot vote, and right. so. You could have it any time within that 10 day period. And what we've done in the past, of course, is record them and then push them out as well. 
see, see that's nice as well. It, that gives access to people if it's recorded as well to be able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be my th thoughts at this point, but. Good, Robert. You got anything to say about this? No, no, I agree. Good, Bill. Uh, I'm kind of up in the air. I do like the idea of uh, pushing it back to May. Well, We're May. already May. We're already May. Yeah. You're in yeah. May already. Yeah. I was just complimenting the decision makers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick? No, I think it's great. Yeah. Virtual meetings. Virtual yeah. Okay, informational meeting. So it sounds before. like we're kind of thinking about going okay, towards let's, that way. Let's put that on our warning. We may have a little more, may have more discussion about it. So we'll come with those motions, Tara, next meeting, and we'll have the warning set up based on what they discuss, like we have on the meetings. Yeah, if anybody has a problem. <clears throat> or if suddenly the COVID numbers drop out of sight. And the sun breaks through the clouds <laughs> and the doves fly out. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think that means we can move on if I'm saying things like that. Um, Rochester High School. Right, uh, Jamie. Just to confirm. We've we've covered all the important things. Yep, we those were the things we needed. Yep. Okay. Let's get on to the yes. Let's get on to the less important. No. Uh, Rochester High School building update. So you had the memo. We the building uh, got below freezing in one wing. Uh, oh, I forgot. I had a T, a pipe, a cast iron pipe T, a half of it, half of one. They were all over the floor, <laughs> all over the floor in the tech room, in the uh, maker space. Ching, ching, ching. The ice just blew them up. Right so now. the, I would say the frustrating thing for us was is that we had worked um, to get uh, heat sensors installed, uh, and they were wireless and they malfunctioned. And Visbit's aware of that because we purchased that from them. So that's good. That's our Vermont School Board Insurance Trust. That's our carrier. So they knew that we had installed them, which is what they asked. Uh, and then they malfunctioned. Um, so the it was only it was limited to that southern wing. The good news it, is it didn't impact the auditorium, um, which is is exciting. It did impact the bathrooms near the auditorium. So we've had uh, temporary heat in the building as backup to just be safe until the new heat monitors are hardwired. Um, and so in Vermont School Board Insurance Trust appreciates that. Uh, and GW Savage has been checking those on a weekly basis. Um, most of the damage as far as water damage was limited to ceiling tiles. Um, so that's good. Uh, we've got some new piping to run. Uh, and while we're doing it, and the insurance carrier uh, is aware of this, we also plan to change uh, some of the piping for the heat system uh, to better insulate it in that wing uh, while we're at it. And so this work is has been underway, but will be completed in the spring. Uh, and we're also, we've got a quote for $9,000. Again, this will be covered via insurance to replace the sprinkler system um, in, the, in that wing. Uh, and that was a $9,000 cost. And so we did have, as I said in the memo, a $2,500 deductible that we'll need to cover. Um, and otherwise we expect the rest of this to be covered by um, our insurance carrier. And they're, uh, they're investigating why the heat sensors didn't work. Uh, we actually discovered this because we were still doing regular walkthroughs on top of the heat sensors. Um, and that's how we discovered the issue. Uh, actually on the holiday was on MLK day. Um, and the, what we are going to do though is Visbit is supporting us in hardwiring heat sensors to hopefully make certain that we don't have an issue around wireless malfunctioning again. And so that's the updates that I have uh, in regards to the high school building. I, I wanna put a shout out to um, like, you know, Lindy, um, our maintenance and facility folks, um, and certainly uh, Visbit for working with us uh, quickly and swiftly, uh, GW Savage, um, and so that we could we could start to get it taken care of uh, right off. And I, as you saw in the memo, I did uh, alert the uh, Rochester Select Board of this as well. Good. Any questions? Thank you, Jamie. 
Uh, Rochester High School building use request, possible action. Now we're there. Um, yes, I had a local community member reach out and ask to be able to utilize like, the locker room space, what I call the lobby, but people here call the locker room in the high school. I call it lobby. And the high school locker room. Exactly. <laughs> Ta always takes me a minute. And the uh, what would be the administrative office to be able to run COVID testing for the area three days a week for ongoing purposes that would be Tuesday Thursday and Saturday I did try and um, offer up using the side door gym access instead because they just it's a big ask in my opinion uh, to keep going for a while I understand the need and the lack of testing completely but um, and why the lobby and why not the <laughs> FCS room and just um, it would Bill Cattell, am I saying the name right? Mm -hmm. Cattell. Yep, Bill Cattell, and that was the area that he picked because he felt like they could hand something somebody could test and hand it back through. That's my understanding. So it's for for people to receive COVID to just come and get a, a, a COVID test, take huh? it and administer it, and then hand it back, and then it would be sent off. Hmm. I think that there's other locations in that building that would be better if it is something we are interested well, in doing at all. <laughs> Lindy, can you, when I, when so, she mentioned this to me, she has an opinion. So my opinion is two things. One, like right now everything's functional and it's one wing and I hope this continues. I would hate for something to happen while other folks are in there because we're not really maintaining that. Like we're checking temperatures and we're making sure doors are locked and secured, but we're not maintaining or cleaning that particular building. And I just, we're spread thin staffing wise. We have what we need. It's not that we're short of folks, but like that's one big ask for three days a week continuously. And as to opposed have. to like a player's event, which is a discreet right. thing that's then and we do it. So, at right, and probably the what they would have to pay for rent to be able to do that for us to be able to heat and, and right. clean. Is, 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 is this a program that has federal funds that is attached Not to it? To my I don't know. Hmm. Other thoughts I, on this or other questions? Anybody? I, Lindy, I know we discussed this before, but I think it's important for the board here. You did offer space up in the elementary school, correct? Right. I offered access through the gym because he, the bill explained that no one's going to be coming in to doing the testing. It's going to be like a handoff. The person's going to go and test and then bring the test back. And I offered up that we could set something up so they could use that side door out the gym and that entrance. Um, and his point, and I understand his concern, um, is that, but it could be someone who's symptomatic, at least coming to the door. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. A, yeah, that's a problem. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, they would be oh, kind inside. of inside. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. still coming yeah. to, we yeah. could have figured out the drop. Um, well, I was trying to, because I understand the need. I, right, well, that's why I was wondering, you know, there's a lot of in individual rooms that are in that high school that you just seem to have outside access that just would seem like you could, are smaller, you could use just a small heater in. It's not, you right. know. Right, I, I guess the other question, and you guys need to grapple with this as the board, but this would be my thought, and this is something I shared with Ethan, is that like, what are your, you've approved one-time uses of one specific space in the high school building? with local community groups who are great about taking care of it and probably know more about the building than I do very easily, no doubt in my mind. What, like, is this a role you want to take on where you're a spot to offer things like this for the community? Because that starts to become a different ball wax. Does my question make sense? Yes, like, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. absolutely. And I think it's right to the point uh, of it. And I think We've made it clear that the building is not to be used, well, educational purposes, but basically not to be used. And we've made some specific isolated exceptions, only a few, um, 
I, I believe that's been our policy sort of across the board. And this does seem like, as you say, I, I feel like this feels like a, a change in how we're utilizing the building for a very good purpose. But I, um, you know, and I'd, I'd be happy to offer them a tent, you know, one of our, you know, once the weather gets better. Um, but I, I agree with you. I just don't know that we're in setup, especially if they're expecting cleaning and stuff like that. And we just can't do that. Yeah. We clearly can't do that. And you don't have a name of an organization that's doing uh, this? It's Bill Cassell. I didn't catch. He just... Okay. I it was more an offhand ask, kind of, like, do, would you I think you could do this? Aspect. He was. I, my understanding is that he reached out to the select board and Dune recommended he contact school. That's my understanding of the ask. I did not catch what organization. And I understand... I Trust me, if anyone gets the lack of testing situation in our communities, I completely understand that mm -hmm. um, concern. Right, because that wouldn't, that wouldn't help with t um, our, our in-school testing at all, by having a clinic that close. Knock on wood, we're in a good spot with that. We have access to what we need for our students. I mean, the building shut down kind of in a, in a way, so it's well, especially as far as a building safety as, aspect too. I mean, is, is it yeah. is it safe enough to have it's, you, it's, you know? I mean, we just had a problem with pipes and everything, ceiling tiles falling, whatever. I, I you know, you can agree with that. I feel like we've been clear on this. Yeah, I think we've, the board's been quite clear on this before. That we're just not in the business of managing that building for use, except for discrete one-off um, uh, occurrences. So um, I, you know, but I think I think we need to take the pulse. Um, do we allow this or not? Does it need to be? A, it needs to be a motion, probably. And I think we should vote it up or down. So move to a, well. The thing is about this. I also feel like I want more information. Yeah, that's where yeah. I'm at. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I think I think we, uh, I think you go back and say before we can decide this, we need to know what the organization is, where your funding is, what your intent is as far as cleaning. But I don't want to put this on you. Right. I think it's kind of like we're kind of not in on this, yeah, but yeah. we're willing to hear some more information, kind of thing. Like this is not what we're we really want to do, but. You know, do you have more information that... Yeah, do us a proper presentation. Yeah. Have us a piece of paper, at least. The players, yeah, the might... players handed us a sheet with dates, times, yeah. right. places, what they wanted to use, and what they were willing to do. Right. I think that's... Uh, exactly. Yeah. For the most part, the answer is really no, but we're willing to... Yeah. Uh, we're willing to... Yeah. 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 Good. So, Robert, Justine, I don't want to speak for you as I feel reasonable. I'm sorry. Yeah. Repeat what? What we, <laughs> what we said was that we wanted more information, that we didn't feel this was a, a concrete proposal yet. We don't know who the organization is. We don't know anything. We don't know. And, and, and we're basically the answer is no, unless you give us a little more information and understanding of what you're doing. Does that sound good, Robert? Good. Yeah, Great. That's... Thank you. I, well, I, I agree that the building is essentially a bit fragile right now. Yeah. especially in this season. Mm -hmm. So we have to have good reason for to make the exception. Yep. Right. And come the spring, who knows? Good. All right. Nine five. And you're good. That's this good. Great. Uh, nine five bold board goal setting and mission vision. Uh, we had a good meeting again. It took us me at least me the first fifteen minutes to just remember what we were doing and then we once we did um, we really did some, uh, really, I think, wonderful work. Um, uh, I've, I've read a lot of mission statements and, and for schools before, and I feel like this one's going in a different direction and is uh, actually usable as opposed to just education speak. Um, so we have, um, and we had, I, I asked Ray to have this available just to put up sort of where we are, to, uh, just to say we're going in two different directions. Um, are sort of simultaneous things. One, we're talking about this, a vision statement and a mission statement. And that um, then we're also talking about some specific goals that we think are important 
to um, to address as the board. Um, I have to say, at 8:30, I'm a little worried about approaching goal specific goal work right tonight. Um, but do you have this? It's, and this is working, and uh, we don't have any you know, action on this. Is it just one, two, three? It's the things? one, two, well, it's, uh, let me see. I know I asked Ray to have it ready to put up. Um, where is it? Down here, Justine. No, okay. I guess it's not there. Uh, let me Table see. Table till next time. Well, no, <laughs> it's, 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 um, I was hoping that I'll show you what I have. Yep, this is it. Short and sweet, as Bill said. We want it, we want it, um, so rigorous creative education. This is the vision, is rigorous creative education. And then, which provides for a comfortable space for uncomfortable learning, and using existing resources to the extent of their creative potential, and a platform rooted in transparency by maintaining the confidence and trust of the community. We were going to extend community out to being administration staff, um, community, um, you know, townspeople, you know, mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. you know, that it's that's our definition of community. Gotcha. Um, there are some things we're, we're not sure that we've got platform out yet. One of the things we like about this is that it, it actually is about both education and also financial fiscal responsibility. Comfortable space for uncomfortable learning both talks about how you're teaching and that the roof's not pouring in water on top of you. Um, so that it, it gives you, the, the goal of this for us, we feel is Literally, it, it's something that the board has in front of it to help it make decisions. Mm -hmm. Like we know, like I remember institutional knowledge, we made a clear decision about the high school, about how we were going to not use it um, and, and maintain it. So I think once you remember those things, it makes decision making much easier. Mm -hmm. So the, this is where we're headed with these. Um, using existing resources to the extent of their creative potential is really about who have we got here to do this thing that we want. So we don't have to create a whole new program for it. It's also about finding the, the talent that a teacher, administrator, um, or the community has that we aren't tapping into. Um, that that's the best educational facility and institution that is always looking for what the creative potential of everybody is. Um, and then this last one really, um, and this was the one we were working on the most right when we had to be done, um, a platform rooted in transparency, is this, um, uh, there was a, the word confidence, Bill brought up the word confidence, and that I think right now we're experiencing that, is that I think people are paying less attention basically because they feel confident in the decisions of the board and of the administration and of the superintendent, supervisor union. Um, and I think that that wasn't by accident. We worked very hard to gain, regain that confidence. Um, and this third plat sort of thing is getting at that, that, um, that maintaining, establishing and maintaining confidence relies on transparency. So that's where we're at. Um, we're going to meet, we're going to meet again. We've got another meeting, um, Justine's about to go into wonderful, crazy study time, um, and uh, we're going to meet again the day of our next meeting, and I, I, I feel like we're doing good work. I think we could, in a less packed meeting, we could talk about some of the specific goals um, that we want to get to. Um, so maybe we, maybe we uh, bump those up towards the top of the agenda for our March meeting. March meeting, and, and so let's we could, do that. We, yeah. could, we could carve out some time. Yeah, I think, I think stuff. if it that's could be... a good be, idea. Jamie, that's... <laughs> the, uh, one was about... Yes. What were, your, what were the two top ones we came up with that we thought were... Uh, we were talking about three. One is academic achievement. We've spent a lot of time on our winter snapshot of how we're doing. The SU has passed uh, basically saying adopted goals that were academic achievement goals uh, presented by Jamie and Onda. 
and it seemed to be appropriate that this board consider adopting those goals as well as an important, uh, absolutely one of the most important things. We also talked about transparency and confidence of the community, and one way we do that is by strengthening the connection and communication with the community and parents. And how do we do that? And should that be a something that this board works on with staff? And that was that was a timely one, being that we're going to talk about how we're going to sell yes. our budget, communicate yeah. our budget Absolutely. to our community. And the so, third one is we passed our governance um, principles and board operating protocols. And we, we, we think it's important not only to do it once a year, but to build that into kind of our thinking. How are we doing? Are, is there other things that we can do to be more effective board in organizing our time or our focus um, or bringing in resources? So those are kind of the general things. And I think we can provide you specific language for your consideration of the full board for our March meeting. Yeah, we, we, you did get a ton of logistics done tonight with your budget and things, so I, I think that your agenda will be such that you can prioritize this a lot more next Excellent. Time. Great. Excellent. I'm going to bump it up to a 9-1 or 9-2. That'd be nice. Great. Any further questions on that? Good. Thank you to the committee for showing up. 9-6. Uh, I don't remember what I wrote. That was um, Select Board communication oh, from Bill. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Stockbridge Select Board invited uh, this board to meet with them. They apologized for the short notice, but they're having a meeting this Thursday. They've got a town meeting, of course, for the regular town meeting on March 22nd. But they'd like to meet with, this would be virtually with the board or representatives of the board, just as a way to kind of communicate what's going on, what's important. Um, where are we? Um, and uh, I can't make that because um, we've got a teacher negotiation session this Thursday. But Do we know what time? Their meetings are usually are 7 to 9, so I would think um, if whoever could represent us uh, and just speak uh, with them, I, I am encouraged that they're interested with us. And remember, they were the ones that came out first oh, yeah. strongly to keep the unification of Stockbridge, no, I, um, I, Rochester. So I, I, I take this as a real plus, I, and if I somebody happy, could come, it would be great. I'd, I'd be happy to, to make that um, if, they can, if they can try and squeeze it at the beginning. Okay. Just because around 7.30 is bedtime. Okay. Not for me, okay. um, so I'd like it to be. Um, but uh, for uh, Wilder. But if, and we've done this before, too, where we showed up early. And I would encourage, it's always nice, too, if some of the Stockbridge... Yep. Perhaps can yeah, I apologize can, if I don't. Um, uh, but um, I'm happy to be the Rochester representative there and field their questions and hopefully not say something really wrong. Well, I, I, I can't say yes yet, but I, I think okay. I can. Okay, that'd be great. But Ethan, I want to correct you. I'm sorry. You're our representative. We're a unified. I know. And I don't think our geography is I worth. Agree. Do they hold their meeting at, at the. They normally have it at the Stockbridge uh, town office, but because of this, they're going to have uh, the weather and it was just oh, going to so be nasty and everything else. Virtually. It's going to be a, a virtual okay. Zoom or Google Meet meeting. Yeah, it's not supposed to be great meeting. Weather that night. Okay, I'll convey that back to the time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. All right. Goodness gracious. Look at us. At only 8.45. Um, do we have, uh, we've taken action on all these? Yep. yep. Uh, do we have new hires and resignations? No. Yes. I love that. Do we have any public, <laughs> no, I just, you know, we've got to. Yes, we have, you're right. Those of us who've been here for four years, every, almost every item on this agenda was tricky. And now it's not. And it's just really, it makes me feel so far, makes me feel very proud of what we've done. Um, is there any public comment at this time? No public. There's no public. Excellent. Our next future agenda items, we've already talked about. We want goals up high. Um, we need to warn our, um, our warning, take a look at our warning, and make a final decision on... Uh, reserve, reserve funds. Reserve, which is um, all part of that warning. Yeah, that has yeah, to be yeah, 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 great. And also uh, energy committee audit. 
uh, presentation is going to be on there. That's okay, great. The SU. Good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Great. Um, uh, we will. Maybe we'll get some information on the COVID testing thing with Bill. Um, the next time, or oh wait, well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see if he has something to present. Only if, if he gets back to us, yeah, if it's if there's a reply. So hopefully, right, right. Well, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then also we will. There was another thing that was in my head that just went out. We were going to talk about. Oh, we'll have another uh, goals and vision update for you, and maybe a maybe a mission statement for you to. Accept or at least take in. Great. Okay. Next meeting date is Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. Sorry. Can I interrupt? I'm so sorry. Real quick. That's just shocking. Yes. <laughs> Ethics. Go. Go. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm uh, just giving you a remind the, the, the ARSA board, the full board is having a retreat Saturday. That's right. Oh, thank you so much. And so that, From that is getting worn. 9 to 11. Virtual. 9 to 11 virtual board retreat. If you can make even. 9 to 11 virtually, and we would certainly love to have any. You know, if you can make a half hour. I mean, half the board was talking about coming in for half an hour, so I'm. But uh, um, uh, yes, if you can be there for just a little bit, it's just. Really, I for a lot of us, it's just to get to know this district. I think we've done a lot of work since I've been chairman on getting to know the boards and getting to feel work. You know that we're a district. I mean, we're not. A, we're a supervisory union. We're a we're an entity. Collaborative effort. Yeah, together. we're collaborative, and I think you can see that in how we're working as a board. And I just think those of you who haven't been to board meetings, it would be an easy way to just come in and see some faces and get a sense, because I think we're going to be talking about some nice broad topics of what the future of the SU is. Um, good. So thank you. Thank you, Jamie, for that. Very much a good, a good addendum. Um, I will entertain, oh, next meeting is Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, 6.30 p.m. at Stockbridge Campus and Google Meet. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh. Second. Amy, Bill, boom. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Good night. Good night. Thank you all very much.